Hello everybody, thank you for coming to check out this video. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if any of you find any value in this video, please share it with other people that you think may also get the same value. In this video, which is part of the lab series that I'm doing, we'll be going through and installing ESXi on the UCS. And there's a bug that we'll have to talk about where we have to um, do something where we install a different version of ESXi and then install the one that we actually want. We'll also talk about the importance of getting the Cisco custom ESXi ISO file. And then in the end, we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the networking configurations and getting the UCS licensed, things of that nature. In the next video in the series, we'll be talking about drawing up the topology of the UC applications and the Windows servers and workstations and all of that great stuff, as well as the actual physical topology which will be, you know, here's our UCS, here's our switch or whatever other hardware we put in here. And these are the interfaces that the cables are plugged into, all of that really good stuff. Now, without any further delay, I'll go ahead and jump into the video. And again, thank you for coming to check it out. In the previous video, we got the UCS powered on. We talked about some of the hardware. We talked about the layout on the back of the UCS and the network interfaces and management interfaces, configured SIMC and got the firmware on the UCS upgraded. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about installing ESXi. However, before we install ESXi, we need to actually have a boot device, a boot drive. And we don't want to use our hard drives because now we're taking up valuable resources just to boot up the ESXi. So instead of using the hard drives, we're going to use what's called Cisco Flex Flash. And we're going to go over here to storage. And you can see here, I have my virtual drive, my RAID controller. And um, we can see some information about this physical drive info and virtual drive info. All really good information, but not what we're here for. We're actually here to see essentially the same information, but for the Cisco Flex Flash here. And while we're on this general page, we can see that there's two drives, two physical drives, just as we saw in the previous video it was those SD cards. And if we go to the physical drives, the number one thing we wanna see here is that it says healthy. Then we go over to the virtual drives and there, there aren't any. So we have to actually configure that. So we'll go back to the general page and we'll say configure cards. And I'm going to set it up to be a mirror. I'm going to leave this, let's see, mirror partition name. I'll just change it to be flex flash drive. And the primary card, I'll leave it as slot one. We could do slot two. I'm just going to leave it as slot one. And for this, I do want to keep it as removable. So now we'll hit save. And this action will mark a selected drive as healthy primary, and the other slot's going to be as unhealthy secondary. So we don't have to worry about that. Once it shows as unhealthy, that's fine. So I'll say, okay. So now as soon as I did that, you can see that the physical drives turned red. Virtual drive count changed to one. And let's go over here and take a look. This says unhealthy, which is fine because we know that that happened because I just configured a mirror and that this one is the mirror primary and this one is the mirror secondary. And we can see here that we have our virtual drive and it's got a RAID. We can see the size of it. Drive status says degraded. And now what we'll do is we will check this box and I'm going to say enable virtual drive. We'll check this box and I'll do sync virtual drive. We can see that it's syncing and it says manual 0% done. A few moments later. As you can see, we're now at 100% for the syncing of the virtual drive and the drive status is healthy. We also see that the last operation status is sync success. And again, this took about 20 to 25 minutes, so be patient or maybe go work on something else while you're waiting for this to complete. With the virtual drive being done now, we have our boot, our boot drive and we can actually install ESXi on that. 
I want to make a couple notes real quick before I actually install the ESXi on my virtual drive, my Flex Flash virtual drive. We want to be sure that we get the Cisco custom image for ESXi. I will be going up to ESXi version 6.7. However, before you do that, because I'm using a, a brand new Cisco Flex Flash, it's been partitioned the way that Cisco has partitioned it. And there's a bug out there that causes some problems with going to newer versions of ESXi. So I'll first have to go to ESXi version 5.5, update one. I've already downloaded that. And I've also already launched KVM. So what I'll do here is I'll activate the virtual drives like we've done before. And then once that's done activating, I'm going to go in here and map the CD DVD. And let's see, we got six, seven here. We got five, five. That's the one I want. We'll map that device and then we'll go ahead and power on the system. Once that's powered on, it will start booting up. We've seen the system boot up so many times already that I'm just going to pause the recording and we'll get back to it here in just a moment. All right, now we've reached the point where the installer was found. We could hit tab for additional option to edit the options. I just let it go ahead to automatic uh, boot. So now we see it's loading the ESXi installer. I'm going to stop the recording for now. I'll kick it back up when this is done, but I'll let everybody know how long this, this part of the process took. Now we finish that part of it. It took about three minutes or so to go through. This piece here will actually take about three minutes as well. But again, I'll stop the recording and play it back once we reach the next point. That part's done now and it's telling us what software is going to be installed and it tells us about the compatibility guide and all the good stuff, but um, I'm just going to hit enter. Here's the end user license agreement. I'll hit F11 to accept that. And now it's looking for drives to uh, identify where we can install ESXi. I don't want this five terabyte option here. I want my flex flash drive, which you can see here the actual name of the drive is what I specified earlier on. I'll go ahead and hit enter to select it and we'll do US default. Let me go ahead and get this password put in the passwords match. I hit enter to continue. This part might take a little while. They even tell us that. So I'll stop the recording and I'll kick it back on once we reach the next point. All right, now it's letting us know what version it's going to install and specifically which drive it's going to install it on. It lets us know that the disk will be repartitioned, which essentially what they're telling us is we're going to wipe this device. If you have any important information on there that you would like to get back at some point in time, you know, stop now, get that data off the drive and then come back and do the install. This drive was was created specifically to install ESXi on it. So I don't have anything on there. I'm going to hit F11. Now we've reached the point that it lets us know the software was successfully installed and I need to put a license on it because I'll be in evaluation mode for 60 days, yada, yada. You can read what's here on the screen. It lets you know to remove the disk before rebooting. And now I'm going to hit enter to reboot. This can take a little while, plus we don't want to go back through watching the whole boot process. And so I'll stop the recording and I'll start it when we reach a point that's worth watching again. Now the system's at the point where typically we get some errors about, you know, something or other, and then eventually it finds the software. This time around, it should just go straight to finding the ESXi software that's on the Flex Flash and then go ahead and boot up. So now we're loading the VMware ESXi. Shouldn't take too long. And now I expect that this part should take a little bit longer than before, but again, it shouldn't take all that long. If we look at the virtual media, we can see that the virtual drives are still activated, but nothing's mapped. 
So that's that's a good thing. That if it was still mapped, we may we might have ended up booting the installation software, which is not what we want to do this time around. Now our ESXi is loaded up and we can browse to this IP address here if we wanted to access the web interface of it. I'm going to hit F2 to customize the system. So we have the root name here and I'm going to set the password to be the same as my CIMC because it's a lab environment and I don't want to have to um, try to memorize more than one password or have a long list of passwords stored somewhere. I'm going to look at configure management network and we'll go to IP configuration. Everything looks good there. So I'll hit escape. I actually don't see anything in here that I'd want to change. I'm going to hit escape again and let's go to that IP address that we have listed right here, 221. So as you can see, it wants me to download the vSphere client and all these different things. I'm not going to do any of it. What I'm just going to do is, is upgrade to ESXi version 6.7. So I'll get out of all of this and go back to KVM. And I'll do virtual media, map CD DVD. Then I'll change this to 6.7 and say map device. We have that done. So I'll hit F12 here. I'll put in the password. And now we have the options of F F2 to shut down or F11 to restart. I want to restart and I'll stop the recording until um, we get later on to the point of being prompted for the ESXi 6.7. Now that we actually have ESXi installed, I'm a little bit concerned that the virtual drive won't be selected for boot. So I'm going to hit F6 here to get into the boot menu and it says, please select a boot device. So we have, um, a couple options here. We have KVM mapped, three different options for that. And I did a CD DVD, so I'd imagine it's this one here. We'll select it. Okay, great. I'll hit, uh, I enter here to see if that speeds it up. It did. So now it's loading the ESXi installer, which I think that's an important thing to note. Earlier on, after the installation was done, it said loading ESXi not loading ESXi installer. So I hit some sort of issue here where it says login failed or timed out. Please try again. I'll hit OK. Hopefully that's not any sort of real problem where the uh, map drive uh, isn't able to get the software running on the UCS. I relaunched KVM and I reached this point. So it lets me know that the interruption that I had didn't cause any actual issues for me. I'm going to hit enter here just like we did before, F11, just like we did before. And there's a little bit of a difference here in that um, earlier we were installing ESXi 5 onto a disk that didn't have any media on it and no operating system, none of that, right? But now we're going to be putting 6.7 onto this drive that already has 5.5, right? And so I hit install, install, but, um, Ideally, what we should see is, is upgrade. Instead, what we're doing is an install. And uh, if you have any virtual machines already on your system, when you log back into ESXi, you won't see those virtual machines. However, if you have your, um, your virtual drive with all of your uh, virtual machines on it and everything else separate from your boot drive, um, those will still be there. And in fact, a while back, I did a video where I was looking to do an upgrade, but I actually did a, uh, an install when I was going from, I think it was ESXi, I, I don't even know, I'm going to I'm gonna get it wrong if I guess, but I was going up to 6.7, and then when I logged in, I was like, oh man, all my VMs are gone, what the heck, and then there was a buddy of mine, Al Reed, super good guy, very knowledgeable, always getting into learning and labbing and doing great stuff. He, I told him about it and what I was trying to figure out. And he's like, yeah, that's simple. As long as those VMs are still on your drive, just go in there and, um, you know, re-register them. So then I started clicking around a little bit and I found what he was talking about. So I'll, I, I'll probably put a video on my channel at one, at one point showing how to do exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's get back to this. I'm going to set the password here and then we'll move forward. So here, this is the part that I'm talking about. Ideally, what it would say is the installer is configured to update ESXi, blah, 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 right? Instead, 
in that yellow it says install. So in this scenario is what I'm talking about where um, you would have to re-register your virtual machines that are on, on the other virtual drive where your uh, virtual machines were installed. I'm going to hit F11 and we'll go ahead and let this move through. Now we can take a look up here. We can see that um, the drives aren't activated. The virtual devices aren't activated. Nothing is mapped. So we don't have to worry about this part where it tells us to remove the installation media before rebooting. We can just hit enter and let it reboot. Now the ESXi 6.7 is booted up. Everything is good. And we'll browse to the IP address listed right here. Now we're into the system. And the next thing that we're going to want to do is start doing configurations on this portion of the setup, such as uh, we'll probably do some networking here pretty soon. Uh, that way we can have our, our lab actually isolated from our home lab. And I'll have to go through and do licensing and things of that nature as well. So in order to do the licensing, we can go here to manage, do licensing, and then we'll do assign license and you put your license key in here. I'm going to stop the recording while I do it and uh, we'll move on to the next item after that. Now my licensing is done. So one of the things I'm going to do right now is do the networking and right here for the VM network, I'm actually going to rename that to be my um, internet access. Let's see, internet access uh, network. That way when I assign this to any of the virtual machines, I know that I'm giving that virtual machine internet access. All right, let's go back and take another look at that. And over here where we see, where we see the topology, we can see that it maps directly to VM NIC zero. And if I wanted to go back over here and add another, another um, virtual switch, right? We could do, we have all these different NICs. We can add these virtual switches, right? So I'll add one here and I could point it to a particular NIC and then that NIC, I would plug into my other equipment. So when I actually go about doing this later on down the road, once I start adding um, routers and switches and all of that good stuff, I'll make sure that I get a recording of what I'm doing with the devices so that it makes a little bit more sense for people rather than me trying to explain it without any sort of uh, visual aid. We'll have our actual videos of me plugging the devices in and everything to make it clear. Anyway, that does it for this video. All of the uh, networking and everything else, I'm going to start another video for that, actually. And we'll go ahead and end this one here. Thanks for watching, and look out for the next one coming soon.